So I'd like to welcome Mr. Frank Ucciardo. He is a contributing correspondent for CBS News' Up to the Minute. For almost 20 years, Mr. Ucciardo was a United Nations correspondent. And in 2011, he won the Ricardo Ortega Memorial Bronze Medal Prize for broadcast journalism coverage of the United Nations. The Emmy-winning anchor and correspondent specializes in issues surrounding the United Nations. He is a recipient of the New York Festival's International Television Award for his series Dateline United Nations. He attended Loyola University and he has twice been elected the presidency of the, the president of the Society of Professional Journalists. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Frank Ucciardo. Thank you very much. Uh, to begin with, I'd like to say it's a real honor to be here today uh, to speak with you and attend this conference. Uh, I should remind you that the views that I'm going to express today are clearly my own. They don't represent CBS News, and they are my personal and professional observations. And uh, if you have a differing point of view, please no throwing of shoes, because this is a <laughs> soft power conversation, not a hard power conversation. Uh, no one could have predicted the dramatic changes in the international political landscape over the last year or so, and it could be argued that some of these events were influenced by the use of soft power. Now, from the perspective of a correspondent here at the United Nations, the use of soft power in diplomacy can be seen in constant use as the use of power and social media in power continues to evolve. If we accept the definition of soft power as the capacity to influence and gain support without the use of force, then it may appear that some of what actually goes on here at the United Nations is at least an attempt to employ soft power through aid, cultural education, and diplomacy, of course. Now, here we are being hosted by the ICD, an organization that uses the soft power of its website and international conferences like this one to influence and gain support for its broad mission of fostering mutual understanding. Now, if we buy into the principle of diplomacy being war by other means, then soft power will continue to grow as a means of a way to influence people and wage war, whether it's by using cultural, educational, or development programs, or by using social media to communicate and raise political awareness. And this, of course, while many countries continue to try to control the power by censoring the internet and telecommunications involving social media, Though I should mention that in the case of direct-to-satellite, uh, direct-to-home satellite TV, uh, this has enabled those people who wield that kind of soft power in communication to reach beyond the censors, and in some cases defy governments uh, who are trying to suppress them. Now, uh, social media you engage in, you know, the movies you watch, the political cartoons, are seen by many diplomats and extremists as weapons of soft power in the war to win hearts and minds. Uh, all media, print, TV, radio, films, cell phone videos, anything that you can put online, including blogs, are weapons of soft power. However, blogs at times can be a poor source of accurate information in journalism because they are sometimes careless with a presentation of facts. And unless, of course, you are reading a blog from a recognized website or a person associated with a reputable news organization, then there is no process for accountability or assurance that there is accuracy in what is being blogged. We have all seen the dramatic internet cell phone video that has been sent from the so-called Arab Spring uprisings here in, uh, actually in Tunisia and Egypt where the protests were being organized and supported uh, through online networks that included Facebook and Twitter. Uh, of course, lately the world has also witnessed cell phone video and pictures from the uprising in Syria. Now, uh, let me see if I can show you a little bit of uh, cell phone video that was actually aired on the CBS Evening News last night. Bear with me for one moment. Just a moment. I'm really sorry, everyone. We did, we did try this before. <laughs> it did work before, I <laughs> It did you. work before. <laughs> it's kind of like home movies, you know, they don't exactly reel out exactly when you need them to. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm. 
Of course, this is a good example of how we've all become slaves to modern technology. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> That was my fault completely. The man uh, shooting the video was saying towards the end there that uh, we are being slaughtered. Where are you, all Arabs? And now here's a little bit more breaking news uh, with regards to hard power, hard power attacks on people who use soft power. The Committee to Protect Journalists reported just last night that the authoritarian states are buying communication surveillance equipment from Western manufacturers and are actually using it to monitor and target journalists. The report cited people, in fact, in Syria who smuggled video footage to reporters around the world. They were subsequently tracked down and tortured by government authorities after their Facebook accounts were hacked by the Syrian Electronic Army, a government-sponsored hacking group. At least 16 bloggers and journalists were arrested last week in a raid on the Syrian Center for Media and Freedom of Expression in Damascus. Now, while much of what's being put out by these soft power channels is credible, one always has to be aware of the reality of what you are seeing. For example, what is to stop a person from posting a picture of a father disciplining a child that is being slapped, and then you see that, and then they put that out there as a human rights violation? You have to really consider the source. Social media's evolution has given rise to soft power as a major influence in diplomacy. Here at the United Nations and in many countries represented here, soft power is an important tool and weapon of influence. Twitter, the online social networking and microblogging service that was launched in 2006, well, as its worldwide popularity spread, many key Security Council members here have been quick to identify Twitter's growing influence and have began posting their own tweets. UN correspondents now get important real-time updates from missions and their envoys via Twitter as issues are being debated in the Security Council and General Assembly, and they also answer our questions that way. Now, while the news cycle here at the United Nations can sometimes be described as hours of boredom punctuated by moments of tension, the flow of information has been more constant in past years. Um, email press releases that we get from missions and governments around the world are now augmented by these tweets and Facebook messages, and in particular texts. Yes, nearly all the key UN envoys that I communicate with on a daily basis employ texting, another form of soft power to keep us up to the minute on what they're doing and answer questions that we pose to them. And let me read you a brief example from an EU envoy leading up to the recent General Assembly vote on Syria. The envoy texted me, we expect at least a two-thirds majority vote in favor of the resolution condemning Syria. The language leading to regime change is still in there. The ambassador will talk to the press following the vote. The UN itself has been actively, of course, engaged in strategic outreach to use soft power to spread its messages about its mission and uh, programs. Just last September, uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for the first time went on to cyberspace and he answered questions submitted through Facebook, live stream, Twitter, and other social media. Soft power is also wielded by NGOs as well as non-state actors, including terrorists. YouTube, the world's largest video sharing website, has been used for years by terrorists and militants to broadcast a range of videos that have included assassinations, bombings, and kidnappings. And they've also used soft power, uh, as, and the, rather the soft power of YouTube, uh, to spread their message to recruit other terrorists. The rise of social media and the way people get their information from a global perspective has distributed power from around the world to smaller individual groups and to people who have, may, really may not have had a voice before of influence. An example is, of course, WikiLeaks internet activist Julian Assange. 
He was one of those individuals whose online disclosure of classified documents was seen as a soft power attack on governments and spy agencies prying, over the, prying, prying open rather the back door of diplomacy. Now, I have to agree with Mark Donfrey, the director of the ICD here, uh, who made the point to me uh, about a year ago that WikiLeaks has made it more difficult to do closed-door diplomacy, and it is more difficult for governments to put out propaganda or provide misinformation, although they continue to do so. Now, the flip side of this, of course, for us in the press is that, or we in the press, is that uh, we may have to balance the scales, uh, you know, on the scales, the people's right to know uh, versus the protection of national security. Now, China's foreign policy moves uh, over the last few years are good examples of some soft power initiatives. China focuses its public diplomacy efforts on developing nations in an attempt to gain the hearts and minds of those people. The relatively new African Union uh, headquarters building in the Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa was completely funded and built by the Chinese. And, uh, you know, the Chinese soft power initiative is, is you know, sometimes paradoxical because, you know, it, it makes lucrative trade and energy deals as well as, you know, building roads and hospitals and schools abroad, while at the same time it's getting aid from a UN development program office in Beijing that was put there back in 1979 to help China's development. And now this is what I would call smart power. Some foreign policy experts also see this as seed planting measures leading to a, a rising hegemony. The United States has operated the same way, particularly after the invasion of Iraq and in its war on terrorism in Afghanistan, where it has spent billions of dollars to construct schools, roads, and other infrastructure. Soft power matters in relations among nations. Now, the use of this was evident when China bought over a trillion dollars worth of U.S. debt, although they probably regret that now. And I can tell you that, speaking to a China central bank economist last year, he told me that Americans are really a bad risk. There are plenty of examples of uh, media soft power in use, uh, causing hard power reactions. Now, who could forget the furor caused by the Danish cartoonist, whose satirical cartoons of the Islamic prophet Muhammad led to violent demonstrations in several countries. Earlier, I had talked about Syria and the censorship by the Syrian government as they try to stop the soft power wielded through the internet and the press. It begs also the question, will the revolts and political unrest that have taken place during the Arab Spring be realized without the participation of social media? Of course they would, perhaps a bit slower because the messages of civil unrest and government crackdowns on it would have taken longer to register in the body politic of a nation. Soft power has been around a lot much longer than most people realize. The operation of Radio Free Europe during the Cold War years, the Voice of America, and of course VOA TV are good examples of the use of soft power before it was given a brand name. Media visionary Marshall McLuhan, who predicted the World Wide Web of the Internet nearly three decades ago before it was created, seemed to be quite aware of the future use of soft power and how it would affect the so-called global village. He argued that the medium is the message and that a medium such as TV affects the society in which it plays a role by the content delivered over that medium. Now, many senior diplomats have told me that in foreign policy, a lack of alternatives clarifies the mind, and when the only choice seems to be hard power, the use of soft power becomes very attractive. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ricciardo.